hey, I'm going to paint this little still life today. And I'm going to paint it from a real setup. So not from a photo. I'm going to pay close attention to the light and the shadows and the reflections and also some of the reflected light in there. And I'm going to try to paint it with as few layers as possible. So quite directly. Now, this is a shorter version of the full length video. You can check that out on my Patreon page for my members. I'll also offer reference photos and some more tips and tricks along the way. And I've got some links down there in the description with my materials and my other videos. Hope you like this. Let's get painting. Now I'm ready to paint. And what I'm trying to do, and I think I'm achieving that most of the time, is to paint quite directly and also paint small. And by that I mean I don't make big brush strokes and fill in a shape with the one color, I go back to my palette really, really frequently and just ever so slightly vary the color that I'm using. So this isn't just one yellow and then I paint the entire lemon with it and then drop some wet in wet in. I'm also going to go from the lights straight into the darks in my first wash. I will be glazing some darks later on. So I won't achieve this all in one wet wash or in one layer. I will go in a couple of times, but still I'm trying to give this form as quickly as possible. But this immediate approach is great also for sketching. If you're somewhere out and about and you don't have the time to sit around and wait for something to dry, to get comfortable with painting your lights and darks at the same time or in the, in, in the same uh, layer. And now I'm ready to move on to my Granny Smith apple and I'm taking the same approach as with the lemon. I'm constantly changing my uh, colour of the green, add a bit more blue, add a bit more yellow to it and just keep it interesting. You know, small, small areas and then just work my way around the apple and paying attention to where I want to keep my white for the highlight and also where I want the paint to be a little bit lighter. But the main objective here is to just have lots of variation in the colors that I'm using while paying close attention to the values. Now I've dropped in a bit of yellow there into the green. That is the reflected light. That is a whole topic on its own. But in short, reflected light is when a surface bounces light into another object or shape so because the lemon and the apple are obviously so close to each other the yellow of the lemon is reflected in the green of the apple it is really useful to have clear objectives before you start a painting or an exercise you know why are we doing this what are you trying to achieve or what are you trying to learn so you have a kind of a a way to measure your success at the end to kind of going have I achieved it or not and for this one it was drawing from life not from a photo uh, reference or following someone else's painting or tutorial it was about light and shadow and thinking about refracted light about casting shadows and the third one was about painting in as few layers as possible the fruit has dried, so I am moving on to my, my second layer. But I feel like I've laid a, a lot of groundwork. And the learning for me right now is that I could have gone bolder in the first layer. So next time I'll try this, I will probably go harder with my colors right from the get-go. Because I'm sort of almost painting over the top of the entire orange here because I feel like it was a bit too wishy-washy. And I'm also not quite happy with the, with the apple, so I'll do that in a second what I've learned or taken away from, from this exercise that I could have gone even stronger in the first wash. Time to put in my two paint brushes there that are sitting inside that bottle before I continue with the bottle. They're just a prop really, a background to the still life just to add 
some vertical lines into it and create a more square composition. All right, now I want to finish that bottle. Now start with lifting out some highlights and finishing off those paint brushes. And I'm keeping it quite loose. Not a lot of detail in there. As I said, this is just a prop, just an element in the background. Don't want to draw too much attention to it. And now I'm using the blues and greys that I left on my palette to add some, um, well, I guess, refractions. Just, you know, when you look through glass, how things all look a bit monkey and you can see some things reflected in it. So I'm just going to create that impression. And again, I have to admit that I could have gone stronger uh, first time round, I did that shadow. I don't really want to glaze over shadows. I like when they are punchy and strong first time round. But that's why we paint. So I have a mental model of next time and remind myself that load the brush up with enough pigment and make the pigment strong enough. And then right at the end here, I decide that I do want to anchor it a little bit. It doesn't sit quite right on the page all on its own. I should have made the whole composition just a little bit smaller so that um, the plate would be not so close to the edge. So now I'm going to try and rebalance that out with, well, firstly, a shadow of the glass bottle. Imagining that this is sitting on a table and we can see the edge of the table and behind it is a wall and then I can add a little bit of color to the background. This is straight out of Charles Reed's repertoire doing this type of very faint background, just a few blobs, a few bits here, but it creates an atmosphere and it is an, uh, an element in how you can balance out a composition. This is a bit random, hard to explain. This is again more of a feeling thing. So sometimes you get to a point in the painting where you know logic and reason and rules don't apply. You gotta just have the feeling for it and the experience. But the more you paint, the more you will get that. And I've taken off the masking tape, had a good look at it and decided that I should have done a bit of a better job with my highlights. I would have loved to leave them out and have it be the white paper. That is the ultimate challenge. But there was always the white gouache to the rescue because I really wanted to have those highlights really strong and really punchy because they're all shiny objects very reflective surfaces, so is the glass. But if I look back at my three objectives, painting from life, tick, paying close attention to light and shadow, refracted and reflected light, tick, and painting with as few layers as possible, yeah, almost a tick. Didn't have to do too much glazing. Managed to do most of it in the first wash. And speaking of learning, I'm still learning to do tutorials and to teach and to share what I know. So I would love your feedback, whether you find this one useful. Did you learn anything? Was anything new? Was everything the way that you were hoping for? Would love to hear from you and hopefully see you in the next video.